what's up you guys and welcome back to Premiere Gal. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell so you're notified when I publish new video editing, production, and photo editing tutorials on this channel. So in this video, you're going to learn about a new photo editing software that I've been using called Luminar. So it's a competitor to Lightroom and Photoshop by Adobe, and it's kind of a hybrid of both. You can work with layers and you can make your photos look great fast. So what I have here is this image of this seaside shot and on the right is after and on the left is before. So all I did was slightly enhance this image, bring out some of the colors, also remove some of the haze, which I'll show you how to do. So let's start from scratch here. I'm going to pull up my original shot here. And I almost forgot to mention that Luminar has a sale right now. It's $20 off. It's normally $69. Let me pull up the page here for you. It's a two day flash sale, which ends on the 22nd of July. So you can save $20 if you buy this now. It's just a one time payment. It's not a subscription like Lightroom and Photoshop. Also, if you're watching this after the flash sale, you can get $10 off with my special code GAL10. All right, so let's go back to Luminar. So here's the original image and the way that Luminar works is down at the bottom, you have all of your presets, which you can apply directly to the image for a quick look. So you can see there's many to choose from. There's even an aerial category of presets, which is awesome. So if you select, let's say outdoor, because this is an outdoor shot, you can choose just by clicking on one of these, one of the looks. So let's say we wanted to try just auto smart enhancer. And what this did is it processed the image and applied all of these filters on the clip already, which you can adjust further. And you can also adjust the amount of this preset. So if it's too intense, you can lessen it a little bit. So these presets are designed just to be a quick click fix to make your photo awesome. And once you make your adjustments here, you can also see the before and after by clicking on this before and after and go back and forth to compare. And it looks pretty good. I would say that the, the saturation for me is a bit too much. I would probably just lessen the saturation and then I would probably just boost the vibrancy because the vibrancy just affects the areas of the image that are less saturated and saturation boosts all of the colors. So then you can click this off to remove the compare mode. If you click and hold the eye, you can see before. And when you release, you can see after. So if this was it, you just go to file and export. But there's also a whole lot of other filters that you can add and I will show you how to use it. So over here in this right side panel here underneath filters, you'll see a drop down for workspaces. So you can click on one of these workspaces to get started. So if you're working with a portrait, you can click on portrait. If you're working with landscape like us, you can click on landscape and it will give you the common use filters that are commonly used for that particular type of photo. There's also aerial photography, quick and awesome, professional and essentials. So I'm going to click on landscape. And what this does is it preloads this area with the commonly used filters here. So the first one obviously is develop. And this is where you have all of your custom controls to control exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows. So if you wanted to reduce the highlights to reduce the sky, you can reduce that a bit there. You can boost the whites and crush the blacks a little bit. And you can add a little bit of clarity to bring out some more detail. But then if you click on add filters, you can see that these filters here came from this panel and they were automatically applied because I'm in the landscape workspace. So the AI filter, if you hover over the AI filter, it'll show you what it does. So what this is, it's just artificial intelligence that is detecting areas of your image that need improvement. So it brings out the natural beauty just by using this one slider called boost. So if I increase this, you can see it starts to boost the image and it just looks better. If I turn this effect off and then on, you can automatically see the difference. So let's keep this at 63. We can always come back and adjust it later on. Now this adjustable gradient, I'm not gonna use it on this clip because I don't think it's necessary. So I'm just going to hit X to remove that. Now saturation and vibrancy. Again, I'm just gonna boost the vibrancy like I showed you before. 
advanced contrast. This allows you to play with the highlights and the midtones and the shadows, so the contrast between all of these. If I wanted to decrease the highlights in the sky to bring out more color, see how I brought back some of the, the color there. If I reduce that, it's not as intense. So you can definitely increase the amount of contrast in the highlights to make it look better. Same with the midtones, which are more of the grassy area. If you see if I increase that, it just makes it a little bit more contrast there. And same with the shadows, I'm just gonna boost this up to lighten up some of the shadows there. I think it's starting to look pretty good. So let's close this off here. The polarizing filter is typically used to enhance the sky. So if I bring this up, you can see that it actually distorts the sky. So we don't want that. So I'm actually going to just remove this filter. And foliage enhancer is pretty cool. It can bring out the color in the grassy area. So if I increase this amount, you can see that it boosts almost the saturation of the grass and the foliage, which I think is too much. So I'm just going to apply maybe like 15. So if I turn this off and on, you can see it just boosted slightly. So that's pretty awesome. Now the dehaze effect, which is here from the filters panel, helps you remove fog in your image. So there's a little bit of fog in this image and we can use this to a certain degree. It depends on the image. In some images it works great and others it just doesn't work that great. So for example, if I increase this, you can see it starts to remove. If you look more in the center where the rocks are, you can see it removes the haze and it starts to look really good, but as we do that, you can see up here, it starts to distort the image on the left and the right, which we don't want. So we can't increase this all the way, but we can increase it slightly. And we can use the brush tool, if you want, to decrease some of this excess pixelation that's going on up here, this distortion. So you can click on this brush area and you can use this brush and adjust the size and the softness as well as the feathering. You can increase the feathering here, then show the mask, and then you can paint over this area that's a problem area, like so. And same over here. You can paint over this area. And then what you can do is invert this, invert the mask, so now these areas will not be affected by this dehaze effect. Okay, so if I click off the brush, now you can kind of see that pixelation go away. It's a little bit more hidden. So you can try increasing that a little bit more to bring out less of the haze and you won't see as much distortion. So I definitely recommend using the masking tool with the brush tool as much as possible. And you know that the area is inverted I also wanted to show you another example of the dehaze effect with this Grand Canyon photo here. And if I wanted to go up to filters from add filters and apply the dehaze effect, you can see that as I increase the amount, it really does a great job at decreasing the haze and bringing in more of that detail that we like. So if I hit the eye off, you can see the difference and on. And then if we wanted to add a little AI filter to give it a little boost, we're pretty much done enhancing this image. If you go to before and after, you can already see the difference. So I just did a couple clicks and this image already looks so much better. And then below that there's golden hour. So here we can decide, do we wanna add in some nice golden tones to this image so you can increase the slider but as you increase it, it kind of just makes the grass kind of look like a mustard color and that's not what I'm going for at all. So I'm just going to delete that. And then curves, we can use this to sort of boost the luminosity, which is the brightness of the image or crush the blacks as well, if we want to a little bit. But I'm thinking it looks pretty good. I may just do a little slight boost there on the side. You can also adjust the red values, the green values, or the blue values in the image. So LUT mapping, this allows you to apply a LUT, which I'm not going to do in this tutorial, but if you have a LUT, you can click on this and you can load your custom LUT or you can load any of these preset LUTs into your image to give it a particular look. 
So I'm not going to use a LUT, so I'm just going to hit X here. Next is structure. This will allow you to bring out some clarity in the structures that you see in the image. So the rock and the grass, if we increase this amount, you will see some structure in them. So it's more detail. If I turn this off, you can see what it looked like before and after. And here you can add some softness to the tops of the grass. So as I increase this, you can see some more softness appear on top of the grass, which is nice and the boost affects the overall structure. So if you boost this all the way up, it looks a bit too intense. So I'm just going to reduce that a bit. And down here is image radiance. You can apply this to bring out kind of a glow to the image, but I think it looks too dreamy. It's not what I'm going for, so I'm just going to hit X. Vignette allows you to apply a dark vignette around the image or a light one. I'm not gonna use it, so I'm gonna hit X. So we made all the adjustments we want. We also deleted some of the filters in this workspace. So if we wanted to, we could actually save this workspace as a new workspace and call it Gal Landscape. So these are the filters that I want to use for future landscapes and save new workspace. And now it will appear here as a custom workspace that we can use. And one last thing I forgot to show you is down here, you can adjust the filter amount so down here, you can adjust it to be just slightly lower than 100. I think I like it at around 60. So this controls the overall power of all of the filters on a whole. So if we go up to before and after here, you can see the difference. It just looks dull. I mean, I thought when I first saw this photo, it looked great. But now after I applied these filters, it looks even more awesome. So let's turn off the before and after and that's it. So that's all there is to starting with Luminar. There's so much that you can do with it and I encourage you guys to check it out. And don't forget about the flash sale that's happening until the 22nd of July this month. And if you miss that flash sale, you can always use GAL10, the code at checkout to get $10 off your Luminar software. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys very soon.